Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Hello y'all and welcome back to Young Folk Knits. My name is Casey and on this channel I mainly like to share about my love of all things fiber arts. So there's a lot of knitting, sometimes there's some crocheting, there's also sewing, spinning, and really who knows what else. I also love to chat about living on a small farm in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We love to raise chickens, animals, gardens, and we really love spending time outside here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, then make sure and subscribe so you won't miss out on any new video content. I thought for this video, I might do something a little bit different and I wanted to jump on throughout the week and sort of show you where I'm at in all of my different projects. So today is Wednesday, June 14th. Yesterday I finished my test knit for Haley from Ozetta and that was the Air Tea. However, I didn't get around to actually wet blocking it until today. So it's currently on the drying mats. I had a really great experience with wet blocking it because to soak it I used something new that I have never used before. So I finished up that tea and I'm going to share more about it maybe tomorrow once it is completely dry and I can try it on and sort of see how everything fits. But I think it's going to be really nice because even before I had blocked it, I really liked it. So that is one test knit down. I do have another test knit that is due July 2nd or 3rd, something like that. And it is a secret test knit. So I'm not able to share anything about that for a couple more weeks. But it is what I am focusing most of my knitting time on though. And I really want to create a whole outfit for it because I think I'm going to wear it one day to Rhinebeck. So what I wanted to do is to sew a pair of pants. I have been wanting to sew a pair of pants for a long time now. And I've got about four different fabrics that I've bought exclusively to <laughs> sew pants with. I've got the Air Knot pants pattern printed. I have the jones trousers printed and the winslow culottes printed so i think for this specific outfit though i want to do the winslow culottes and i want to hack the pattern so i did have this pattern printed at you fine fibers so they printed it on the big a0 paper and they sent that to me so i love it i love it i'm only gonna have to cut a few pieces i'm not gonna have to tape a lot of things together and I think what I want to do is to hack this pattern into some tied linen pants so the fabric I got is this washer Brussels or Brussels washer linen by the ever famous Kaufman <laughs> fabrics but I really love it because it's not denim. It is a linen blend. I think it's blended with rayon. So it's got so much drape. It's awesome. It also has a little bit of weight to it, but it's not what I'd call a heavy weight by any means. But this color gives it a sort of denim look. So what I want to do, I think, is to hack these culottes 
so that they don't actually attach on the sides of the legs. Instead, they'll wrap around each other like a wrap dress or a wrap skirt and you'll have one tie from the back that comes around to the front and ties and then you'll have another tie that goes from the front and wraps around to your back at the waist so that is my plan i'm going to cut out the fabric or i'm going to i'm going to cut out the pattern pieces and it's the same pattern pieces that you used for the normal pattern and I'm going to decide between those tie pants or I'm going to sort of hack it by doing a elastic waistband instead. So it will be sewn together, but I will have the elastic all the way around. If I do that, then I'm probably going to cut a little bit of the fabric off the top and sort of adjust the pattern to have a sloping ease so that it goes diagonally in a nice straight line from the short from the shortened waist that has come not shortened but instead of my fabric being this wide you know I'm gonna bring it in and then from there it's gonna go out and into the sort of sort of more of a flare shape I think to these pants so we'll see I've got two different fabrics so whichever I do with these I'll probably do the other hack for the other fabric but I'm ready to go ahead and cut my pattern out and as soon as I can finish up this test knit which I'm actually really enjoying knitting but I'm also ready to be done with it because as a content creator when you do a secret test knit it does make it a little bit harder because I can't show you I can't share with y'all what it is that I'm spending my time on so I don't always have as much content wise to share but Pearl Soho has very kindly gifted me some cotton pure 100% cotton yarn it's organically grown cotton and this is a sport weight in the color warm rock and my plan is to make a sleeveless top slash vest out of this so there's a pattern by sorry nordland i have loved for the past year it's called the rosenland top and it has just steadily grown on me more and more and more but i think what i really started to love it is whenever i started looking at it more as a vest that i would wear over a dress or over a long sleeve shirt as opposed to a sleeveless top. I think it looks great either way, but I am much more drawn to it aesthetically as a vest, I think. So I wanna get this done. Right now, it is on my list as one of my Ron Beck outfits. <laughs> so I'm excited to cast this on. Because it is 100% cotton, I am going to be knitting this on some wooden needles. So this is the Lantern Moon fixed needles or three and a half millimeters, but they really are beautiful. There's this dark wood and a really nice gold finishing, but what I love is the cord. The cord is this absolutely fabulous metal wrapped in nylon or plastic rubber i'm not sure it's so smooth though closest thing i've seen to chow goo needles that are not chow goo <laughs> cables so i really really love this lantern moon is actually sending me one of their interchangeable needles so i'm really excited to try those out i'm really wanting to do a bit of a deep dive into all kinds of different wooden needles and metal needles <laughs> and bamboo needles and really decide what I love best. There's going to be more on that in the future but I have to say this swivel stainless steel cord is amazing because the cord is in here but your needle can actually swivel around that cord. 
Now that is something really special in my opinion. So my goal is to cast this on at some point, although honestly I probably won't be able to work on it much until I finished my secret test knit. And then I also want to get my pattern pieces cut out and get my fabric cut out. And then I will have everything ready to go ahead and sew the pants up whenever I get time. I got this fabric from Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics and I did the matching thread. So they picked that out and sent it to me. So I really gonna have pretty much everything I need for these pants. So that is pretty much my plans for this week. I'd also like to get a little bit of spinning in, even if I can only spin for 10 minutes a day. Um, every day that I spin, even if it's only five minutes a day, it definitely helps me to keep my technique at least steady instead of declining. <laughs> and and so I do, I do want to try to do that as well. So my goals for this week are to cut out my pattern, cut out my fabric, sew my pants at some point, finish my chest knit by this time next week, Try to get at least five minutes of spinning in every day. That is my goal. I will keep you updated. <laughs> Good morning. Today is Thursday and yesterday I was able to cut out my paper pattern pieces and this morning I just cut out my fabric pieces. The only thing I have left to do is cut out the tie that I'm going to use which is not part of the pattern. It's actually part of the hack and this um, linen rayon blend, the washer Brussels fabric. I need to look that up because I feel like I keep saying it wrong. <laughs> um, anyway, this is actually really light. It's got some drape in it. I think it will be a really good summer pair of pants. So I'm excited. I'm about, I'm about to measure the top of my leg pieces so I can figure out how long I need to cut a rectangle. All right, I have my ties cut, I have my leg pieces cut, and what I did was three inch ties that will in the end be one inch. So let's get sewing. So right about now my microphone quit working, <laughs> but I'll tell you a little bit of what I was talking about. This is my finished air tee, and I absolutely love the I-cord edging 
Even though the hem rolls a bit on the bottom, I actually think it's a pretty cool look for this tee. The fabric is 50% wool, 50% cotton, the sauna yarn from Wool Dreamers. And I will say that even though it does have the cotton content, it is a bit warm for me during the summer. This is a strucket, and it is what I use to soak my finished air tee. They very kindly sent me the 19 liter bucket with a basket strainer in the color aqua. So what I did was fill up the bucket with warm water and wool wash. Then I put my knitted sweater into the basket and I put the basket down into the warm water. I let it set for about 20 to 30 minutes and when it was finished, I pulled my basket out, set it on top and all you have to do to drain the water is pop that little drain spout open and everything will drain out for you right there in the bathtub. So I thought that was really nice. Then I was able to just squish out some of the last bits of moisture and actually carry my sweater over to the blocking mats in the basket. This really helped from lifting a wet garment that then distorts your fabric from pulling and hanging down and it will really stretch it out in places you don't want to. So this was a pleasure to use. I loved it and I'm going to continue to use this from now on every time I soak one of my knitted garments. Good morning, it is Monday and I'm very excited because Thursday I was able to completely finish my Winslow culottes. So as I had mentioned before, I did the hack with the tie and I have to tell you it is probably one of my favorite things I have ever sewn and I have sewn a lot of things. <laughs> These are so comfortable and I feel like they're really flattering when worn correctly too. I think that one of the keys is wearing it where that the crotch is not way too low. So this was a super quick project. I cut the pattern out on Wednesday and then Thursday morning I cut my fabric out and was able to completely sew the entire pants that morning. I don't have a serger. I do use a very simple Singer sewing machine. It is Singer Heavy Duty, I believe is what it's called. It doesn't even have any electronics to, you know, select different stitches. You turn a dial. And I love that because I feel like the fancier some of the sewing machines get, the less I understand <laughs> how they work and the more likely they are to tear up on me. So because I'm not a professional seamstress and I honestly don't sew that often, I don't really love it that much even. I, I think that the very simple sewing machine works great for me and it is not that expensive. I want to say it's around two, the $200 family. So a little bit about my pants and how they turned out. I absolutely love them. Whenever I first tried them on, I thought that the fit was flattering except for the fact that the crotch was a little bit low. So what I ended up doing was cutting off some of the waist at the top and I did that on the front and the back and that ended up raising the crotch for me. These are meant to be high-waisted and so I wear them very high-waisted and that definitely um, I think is the most flattering because everything else looks like it is where it should be <laughs> then. The pattern is written for someone that's 5'6", and I am 5'8", so these definitely look like, you know, the kick flare style long capris ankle pants on me, and I think if I make them again, well, I am going to make them again, actually, I already have fabric, <laughs> I will add two inches to the leg, and I will cut two inches off from the waist. Here, let me show you. So this is the Winslow, Winslow culottes, and I did the wrap pack.
Okay, I tried really hard to show you the bottom of the pants, but it wasn't working. So I will try to get some footage of the length of the pants in a little bit. <laughs> also, I have not stepped off all of my threads yet, so just ignore that. <laughs> Anyway, I really, really am pleased with this. I used some washer Brussels. I'm probably saying that backwards. I can never remember <laughs> if it's Brussels washer or washer Brussels. Anyway, it is Robert Kaufman fabric, and I use the color Rain, and I feel like it gives it a really fun chambray denim look. So, I like that color. The next ones that I'm going to make are some slub fabric in a sort of caramel color, caramel, caramel. And I think those are gonna be really fun. Anyway, overall, I give this a five out of five for me. I really like it. And if you live in super cold climates, then I would say probably not the best wintertime pants. <laughs> but for me in Arkansas, I would say 10 months out of the year, I could easily wear these. I'm still working as hard as my little fingers will knit on this test knit and I've gotten, I'd say I've probably gotten eight inches of the body done. So I need to finish up the body and then start working on everything else. I'm using some Ghost Ranch Spin Cycle, and I've got two. This part, it's got some really cool colors in it. I like it a lot. It's a little bit more muted for Ghost Ranch, and I love that. Okay, so what I need to do today is wind up yarn for my Rosinland, which I think I'm definitely making in time for Rhinebeck, even though it's a summer top, as I mentioned before. I think it would be a really fun vest over dresses and shirts and everything like that. But I'm not going to work on it at all until I finish my test knit. I am going to focus monogamously <laughs> on my test knit. But I I don't I can't remember if I told y'all this before or not. Um, but I feel like I've got myself on a very strict schedule in order to finish some things up before Rhinebeck. So, definitely need to finish this test knit up within the next week and a half. By like July 2nd, I think. Um, so, around 10, 11 days, 12 days, you know, something like that. I definitely like to finish before 12 days. So I can block it and all of that. So then before Rhinebeck, I want to make the Rosalind vest and I want to finish up some shawls. So those are definite things for me knit wise. So as soon as I finish my test knit and before I really start my Rosalind top, there's something I want to try to fit in there. So we have a, a weekend, long weekend event, um, like July, seventh something like that and so i basically will have a week i'm guessing from when i finish my test knit until the event and i would really like to wear a ranunculus i do have a ranunculus it's kind of like a creamy linen colored ranunculus but i want to make a ranunculus in a different color here let me show you so I have some of this sort of sea green color and I want to make a ranunculus um, out of it. It is a fingering weight cotton linen base and it's not super soft. It's very cotton linen like, you know, but I think that'd be a nice summer fabric. I have been talking to Sarah from Craft Me Not Yarn, Co Yarn Co. And she has this beautiful um, sport weight base and it is 50% wool, 50% silk. And she's gonna dye me up some of that in a similar green color. And I think that that is the fabric I prefer and the weight of fabric that I prefer to do a ranunculus with. So, I'm definitely going to make one in that yarn, but I think I might also make one 
in this fingering weight yarn. So what I'm trying to decide is if I should hold it single or hold it double. Now it's a pretty, I don't know, I don't want it to be too stiff. I think holding it double, you know, I'll definitely not be that stiff still because the ranunculus is knit on a pretty high gauge needle like maybe a 10 or 11. That's the only thing I could possibly think I might be able to get done in a week is a ranunculus. I knit one before in like four or five days, so I know it's possible, but I would like to have a summer ranunculus in a color like this to wear to that event. We'll see. I may try to cast this on and fit it in as soon as I finish my test knit and before I start my my other knit. I have got my Pure Cotton Pure from Pearl Soho that I need to wind up just to get ready and I'm holding it in this super fun camp bag from Shop Knitting Nelly or Morgan is her name actually. If you can ever snag one of her bags I recommend it. They are hard to get because they're so popular but they are really, really cool. So then I'm still trying to figure out for sure what else I want for Ron Beck. I was gonna, I was going to try really hard to finish that um, big wooly cabled sweater from Sorry Nordland that I had test, but I'm afraid that might be too hot. So I'm kind of thinking about switching gears and just sticking to a cardigan. So having the Rosalind vest, my test knit, and then maybe a cardigan. And I would need to have all of that done by October, what, like 15th or so to have everything ready. And it is not even July. So I think I could do that. I think I could do the Rosalind and a cardigan. Yeah, I should be able to totally do that. And then I also want, you know, some shawls in there. So probably finish some shawls I have and I'm also working on a different shawl, which I'll share more about soon. But, you know, I think it's doable. I think it's doable. <laughs> I just have to stay focused on track. All right, I'm going to wind up this yarn and then I need to run out and check the garden and I'll take y'all with me so you can see what all we're growing this year. This one is our squash, zucchini, cantaloupe, melon garden. 
this is all cucumbers right here and this is one more cucumber this is cantaloupe and watermelon and then down here at the end is squash and it looks so lush and healthy we have so many blooms just tons and tons of blooms everywhere and we're already getting squash and cucumbers so now i'm just very excited for the melons they're probably my favorite <laughs> but you can sort of see all the little squash in there squash blooms i have so many zinnia blooms right now they're just they make me happy and this garden is 100 percent tomatoes so there's 36 tomato plants and right here we've done what's called a florida weave so we have these fence posts and as they grow we just weave them in with baling wire and it helps them to stand up straight so here we've done something a little bit different on these two rows we have put the tomato plants actually between these panels and they are extremely sturdy and that helps a lot whenever we get severe thunderstorms with sustained strong winds we get a lot of hail sometimes we get tornadoes <laughs> and these really help them to keep from just falling over flat and breaking so i think next year we may do all of our rows with these panels i've got quite a bit of larkspur and bachelor buttons over here still waiting for quite a few iris or not irises gladiolus to bloom and i think that those are some of my favorite flowers so this is another garden down at a different spot and these are all potato plants and they are desperately needing to be dug up they are ready i <laughs> just have not have not done it yet here are onions and we just come down and pull onions every day as we want to eat them. The longer they stay out in the, in the heat, the, the hotter they get, as in taste-wise. So spring onions are my favorite, but these are so nice to cook with. These are all watermelons, and they're looking pretty good. You can see we've got blooms on them, so I... Last year we got some amazing watermelons and I'm excited to get some more this year. Over here we have lots of sunflowers blooming, which make me so happy. These are near our beehives, which is nice because the bees absolutely love them. So today I'm making one of my absolute favorite summer meals and that is a Greek salad. So I'm going to cut up some fresh lettuce, some cucumber, tomato, olives. I like to add feta cheese and olive oil and balsamic vinegar dressing that I like to make. And then I'm going to saute some chickpeas, which I saute over olive oil with a little bit of seasoning and I like just to, to sprinkle that into the salad as well. so much for hanging out with me today if you enjoyed this video then please make sure and give it a like and also hit that subscribe button it helps my channel out so much and it also ensures that you won't miss out on any new video content also a couple episodes back I announced a giveaway for some yarn from Cami Jo yarns or Camilla over on YouTube and I'll be announcing the winner for that on the next episode. So if you haven't entered that yet, make sure you comment on that video because you just have a few days left to do it. <laughs> so I'll announce the winner for that next episode. And until then, happy knitting y'all.